dog bones. Engine tends to get well, off at 15 degrees warmer. Where did you lift that off? When I pop the fuel rails off, I'll pop them over here. for lowering take manifold gaskets, but since we're replacing your lifters over in there. Little pulley, I get the front pulley off so I can get to the bolt that I need to do. here, I mean, there's that bolt that's specific for that spot. Each bolt, there's three bolts they all right here, each one is specific. This is the shortest one here, if you, or this is a longer one here, this is a shorter one here. So, yeah, and if you mix them up and you put this bolt back here, you'll punch a hole through your valve cover. <laughs> so, you make sure, I usually, this bolt is slotted um, on the automator, so I don't even take it all the way out, I just get it loosened up. Yeah, it'll slide right off once I get this last bolt off here. Now you can get to your valve cover bolts. Mm -hmm. and that's it. And that, all the wires in this side are disconnected. So I work to the back and then do like wrap, I wrap it around the each yard and keep it out of the way. Use a 6.10 millimeter socket on this stuff because the sheep of the bolts kind of makes it round off. Valve cover bolts? 
Hmm? Valve covers are actually three eighths inch. No, it looks cool to uh, Map sensor bracket. So oh, bracket oh. back here. Map sensor. This is a bolt people forget about. Sometimes it's hard to find. Alright, now I'm ready to. I'm almost ready to move the characters. Fuel rail. Fuel rail bolts, 10 millimeter, four of them. They're just, they're well, actually just nuts. It sits on studs. What was that? This brake brought to you by Pepsi. <laughs> Caffeine free Pepsi. <laughs> you just lift up. Yep. Wiggle, wiggle, tug. Some extras, but we can inspect them here. They yeah. aren't really going up. Oil and coolant. <laughs> Plenty of people have tried to remove superchargers and forgot this last bolt here. The bolt through the snap. Yeah. Alright, now I'm going to pull this sucker off so I want to pull this guy up. Pretty good, oh man, it's like oil. Soaking it up. See, that's a coolant oil mix right there. It's got this high end of a, uh, it's mostly coolant. Just, just all sits back in here where you can't see it. You'll see it up in here sometimes. But. Three bolts, 15 millimeter. One on top, two on bottom. Two, one is visible. Two are is not. Right, this guy just wiggles out. This one, this coolant o-ring is uh, not supposed to come out like that. Obviously, this elbow broke. A piece of it broke inside, and so did this one. Yeah. It normally goes out to about here. Yeah. So these will have to be replaced. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. See, this one breaks off too on the inside. Same thing. Off. Both of them had both ends break off. You gotta make sure we remove those pieces then. They're trashed. Do they Here. These reuse the rings? No. They come with new o rings on the whole, uh -oh. the whole thing. Jeez, man. I've never had them go. And the one down here going to the water pump broke too. 
Usually you can see you can see signs if you're having gasket issues when you're pulling these things out. And as these go, some go into a water jacket, some go into an oil jacket, or uh, I think most of them go into you know into oil areas. But the gaskets fail right in the middle of the head area mm -hmm. where the two bolt passages are, right here and here. So these bolts here, 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 and here will show signs of sludge on them. Out of the way here, and there. Okay, and just lift it up. Might stick a little bit. You try to keep it even. There might be a little bit of corn left in there, but your gasket stuck on. And you can see the failure. Failure points are here. See how it buckled in? See that with the light on there. And right here, they buckled in as well. Plastic gets brittle and just buckles in right there. Same thing up here, here. And then oil and you know, coolant kind of mix and just seep up like this way. That's where you see all the signs of wetness right there. A little bit over sludge over here. I mean, there's sludge right there. It's starting to separate, so I'll we'll just take them all off together. Into the trash. Yeah, they're pretty gunky. Right there, see it? Mm -hmm. The hole. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wipe these off. A general wipe off. Nothing fancy. I'll clean real well later. So if the valve cover gasket is leaking, the oil comes out and runs a certain way down the, the, channel. Uh, the channel. I don't know if they replace the channel or just the gaskets. Mm. Chocolate and brownie. Yeah. That stuff just sticks on there. This is a GM performance parts piece that I got. Uh, a organizer thing. Valve train organizer. Nice. So, so that there. I think that's a good place to put it to you. Yeah. I probably intentional. Well, it's yeah. meant for a V8. I mean, obviously, it's got eight, you know, yeah. 16 holes in or whatever. So just break them loose first. You hear the click, that's the. This thread sealing on the old bolts yeah. coming off. It's working out. And off they come. So the, I keep the bolt in there so it sits on that. That's for the bolt hole. These are for the lifters. These are for the push rods. Nice. Yeah. And they have a little trough here to catch the oil. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There's like 20 bucks, but it sure beats a piece of cardboard sitting on the floor. Gets down. Not bad at all. I, I kind of would have expected it more. Be more expensive than that. It was special order to get it. Especially so. <laughs> and you pull the push rods out, you let them, they'll have some oil on them, so you let them drip a little bit. These are rocker pedestals, and obviously that's your valve springs. Tip of the valve right there. There you go. I'm gonna do your these guys down here. Again, three eighth inch. I'm supposed to take these these guys off, just turn them upside down to get the oil to drain out of them. Now the lifters are free to come out. There's one. Okay. 
which one's the new one? Mm -hmm. Pour a little bit of oil on down there. each of the down each of the lifter holes. Kind of rinse them down. So, I don't know, had I done it sooner, I probably, probably wouldn't have done it back. You see how the one sit, that lifter sits higher than the other? Yeah. It's because of where the cam is. Mm -hmm. That valve's pretty much open right now. Yeah. So the cam actually pushes on the lifter? Cam, yep. The, on the, the, on cam, the roller. The roll, cam rolls on the lifter. Yeah. Or the lifter rolls on the cam with mm -hmm. the little wheel. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what makes these valve trains pretty much last almost. Do they have this? Doesn't matter which way they go up. In or well, I put them in. If they, you try to worry them the same way, um, because they kind of like develop a seat mm. for the rocker that they are going to. I mean, these are new lifters that they're going on. But I mean, when I put them in my valve train organizer, they they're oriented correctly. So start with six. Yeah, I mean, I forgot. Got to basically suck the oil out of the rock bolt holes too. Yeah. Because that will throw off your torque reading. You'll have a loose rocker and you'll have tap, 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 tap. <laughs> That's the whole point of doing this was <laughs> get rid of the tap, 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 tap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are 11 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. So the 90 degrees are just because it's torque to yield. So you tighten them until they click, right there. Usually try to orient the wrench in a way that's like this, and then just turn it 90 degrees. Ninety degrees after the click? Or after what? the click, yep. Huh. Tap a little bit of RTV to hold the gasket in there. It tends to kind of fall back out. But since this is the front one, she should be fine. Right and if it would fall out, you'd see it hanging out the bottom. Using a tilted knife because it's stronger one than a razor blade, and triangular gets in the hard to reach spots. And try to do it from top to bottom mm -hmm. so that you're not pushing dirt into the intake man or into the liquid valley. Towards the injector holes and stuff. Yeah. This is aluminum, so you have to be a little more careful with it. Cleaning work you need to do. Mm -hmm. This is a brake clean. Yeah. Let's spray it on here. <coughs> Stinky stuff, huh? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. But it dissolves the oil on it so you get a better surface to adhere to and stuff with the gaskets. Tabs in the bottom of the going. Yeah. It's not a left or a right side, so I'll just go in there. There. I can put more dabs of RTV. See where the bolt holes are. Straight, straight down, like so. Like so. Then start putting the thread sealant and the bolts in the holes. Make sure the threads are all kind of coated. Yeah. Now these bolts locked out. These bolts you, I don't you don't send all the way down to 11 foot pounds right off the bat. You just work your way there. Mm -hmm. so it smushes out the RTV and the rubber. You know, just basically let the bottom out. Like that's the first one I did. And when I get back around to it, you'll notice that it still it goes down even more. I, you know, I basically seated it on the intake manifold. But as you go around and do more. And more bolts, it starts, you know, squish, squishing down. First. Alright, now cool my rings.
they're going in easier than they were coming out. Exactly. Yeah, Sorry, I thought I needed it. So I was able to get a better grip and got it going. Seventeen foot pounds. Be careful with those hoses; they can they can make a mess. The nice thing is your O-rings are in good condition because of this. They were they didn't dry out because they've got oil. Mm -hmm. They've been sitting in oil. <laughs> Yeah, that they are. Get that map sensor installed. Gave up on the gloves. Yeah. It's like, oh well, they're already dirty. Looks good. Belts, oil change, cool. I think we're ready to fill her with fluids. This side leave unhooked uh, for the first cranking and stuff. Yeah. Because crank it without fuel and spark to build up the oil pressure. Mm. Fill it with fluids. Oh, we need to hook up the throttle linkage. Once and then wait a couple seconds and turn it off. You need to build up the build up the fuel pressure. Should I crank it or turn it off? It's where it makes weird noises after you turn it off. Cr turn it on to run, but don't crank it again. Keep it there. Check for I'm not using my other light here. Check for fuel. It looks 
dry. Yeah, crank it for like fifteen, like ten to fifteen seconds here. Just turn it. And crank. Yep. Let's sit for a couple seconds here. Okay. Same thing? Mm hmm. Okay, turn it off. We gotta get the plug wires right before we fire it. Okay. Plus, I wanna have my scanner here to. To, uh, I'm a scanner here to watch the coolant temperature go up because if it, all of a sudden it might speed up and we got you know we have to let it hit like 210 and then turn it off. We're ready, Freddy? Oil's in, coolant's in, everything's in. Thank you.